The time has finally come and Rebel 6 is here. In this video, I'm going to be talking about all the new features. So there's a lot that's gone on since Rebel 5 was introduced, a whole bunch of new features. Uh, Rebel 4 introduced acrylics and oils. Rebel 5, the beautiful true to life color inside of the pigments inside of Rebel 5. And Rebel 6 introduces fractal image processing, the liquefied tool, all sorts of guides and grids, favorite brushes, and a handful of other things that are going to make painting better quality, more beautiful art, even easier than it's ever been. So let's talk about what makes Rebel 6 unique and go into some of the new features that you can be looking forward to. Let's start off with a fun little feature that a lot of people have been asking for. Go here into preferences and there is a new light mode. Very stylish, they did a good job with the colors here. When working with low resolution images, Rebel 6 is the champ. It uses a new fractal image processing that's driven by machine learning and AI to really help you upscale any image you put into the software. Let's go ahead and paste the coming soon Rebel 6 image. We're going to go ahead and click OK. And what you're going to see here when we zoom in is this very small image has a lot of pixelation. This is very standard. Inside of Rebel 5, there was an introduction to something called NanoPixel. NanoPixel uses AI and machine learning to upscale whatever image you put into and onto the canvas. It uses the canvas textures as well as a lot of intelligent algorithms to produce a better looking image that you can print and it'll look beautiful. Okay, so now inside of Rebel 6, there is a liquify tool. Similar to Rebel 5's NanoPixel, the new liquify tool uses fractal image processing. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. The liquify tool is very fast, it's responsive. You can push, you can expand, you can pinch, you can push and pull twirl, and you can reconstruct. Now Rebel 6 Pro, which includes NanoPixel, which we just turned on. So what that means is that you can actually push and blend and use this tool to reconstruct things at a level that does not require you to redo your artwork. The quality is good enough to use. So you want to give her a different nose, you can do that without having to redraw everything, just pushing, pulling, expanding, pinching. This liquify tool is better than anything else anywhere else. If you want to at the end, you can reconstruct and bring this back to how it was before you started. And as a reminder, this is the image we are actually working with. Let's go ahead and jump over to the warp tool. So warp, this is in the transform area. And what we can do, we can change the number of splits and you can pull on these nodes. And let's push up here a little bit. We're going to have a really nicely done warping effect. All right, so if we want to apply this, we would click on OK. And you can see we've got a really nice looking, again, well done warp effect. Let's go ahead and do that again. I'm going to undo, choose warp, and let's turn on NanoPixel. All right, so we're looking at this again, warp here. Let's click OK. Look how cute she is. So cute. 
So you can see how great the warp tool actually works. This is a really clean warped image. It looks stylistic. It doesn't look like you just pushed things around. You can use this to develop and enhance your style. Let's take a look at reference images. So we're going to press Control Shift R and I'm going to grab an image of my little peanut. We're going to put it on the stage. Here you can see it down right here and let's go ahead and blow this up. Let's clear this layer right here and select this one. And now there's a number of different options inside of reference images. These new additions are so helpful in creating good balanced art without having to redo steps over and over again. So let's go ahead. I'm going to click show on canvas. You can see here this image. We're going to scale it down. We're going to move it over and let's pull in here. And now something that I really like and really find useful is the option to add guides. So let's turn off the ability to move. We're going to edit guides. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple guides here on the canvas so that I have some proportions and structure going in. Now I can see right over here, if I turn off the image here, I actually have a grid in place so that if I start drawing, here, I know about how wide this should be. I can see how far up this top part is, how wide roughly the shoulders are. And I can see a lot of this structure without feeling like I'm copying. Uh, I'm actually using this as a wonderful tool to make sure that my art is lined up the way that I want it to be. This will save you so much time. This is a very useful feature. Now, if you want the guides to look different, you can go here into preferences and right down here, you have reference image guides. You have a color right here. Let's make it a little easier to see and let's make it a little bit bigger. You can see those guides right there. You can turn them again on and off, move the guides, delete the guides, adjust the guides. Rebel 6 now has grids, guides, and canvas bounds. So you can see these here in the view menu You can go to show control one, two, and three and control four will turn on and off reference image guides. Now, all of these can be snapped to with the exception of the reference image guides. So you can choose which things will snap to where let's go ahead and place a small object. Let's create a circle here and then we're going to grab and center it here. You can see the grids turn red to show that we're snapping. You can snap to corners and you can snap to center. Guides are all created specifically by the user. So you just drag either down or up and tap to remove the guides. You can drag up. You can also drag on the canvas and move these and then drag that off in order to delete it. Transform and canvas resizing has also undergone some surgery. It is no longer using the bilinear process. Uh, that was in Rebel 5, but is now using fractal processing for the transform and canvas resize. So I'm going to demonstrate that for you. So here we have a very, very small, I have nanopixel turned off so we can see what this actually looks like. Very small color swatch. I just love the color blending in Rebel. All right, so we're going to duplicate this. Now I have this on two layers both of them the same thing. I've labeled one fractal and one bilinear. Let's move one over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to resize this one and set this to fractal. We're going to click OK. Now this one bilinear, we are going to set to bilinear and we're going to expand this out to roughly about the same size here. We're going to click OK. And what I want you to see is the difference between these two images. This one on the right has retained its sharpness. The lines look like this is something you painted at this size. 
This one is scaled nicely, but it has a bilinear blurring effect that kind of blends it so it doesn't look highly pixelated. The one on the right is the one done with the fractal processing. It looks so much better, far, far, far more usable. Now the same process is done with canvas resizing. So canvas resizing in Rebel 6 standard uses bilinear, Rebel 6 Pro uses fractal. That means if you start with a really small image and you're trying to increase your canvas size, you can do that. It no longer has to go to nanopixel export and then back in. You can do that on the canvas and take something very tiny and make it really nice and big and usable. New in Rebel 6 is something I'm personally very excited about, and that is the favorites category in the tools. So let's say I want a watercolor brush. I really like this liner. I can choose copy brush presets to favorites. This makes a, this is a non-destructive copy. That means that this one stays the same. And then over here in favorites, this one, anything I do and to edit this will not change the original one over here, which is fantastic. I like this. Let's go over and we're going to look at some of the new brushes and with the new brush engine that I'll talk about in just a little bit, some massive improvements in what you can do. So here we have some grunge brushes. I really like grunge number two. We're going to right click on it and choose copy brush preset to favorites. I use pencils very frequently. I like Pentel. So we're going to copy to favorites. And then I use a marker on a regular basis for adding shadows. So we're going to do chisel and we're going to copy brush presets to favorites. Now when I go over here, I can switch between all of my favorite tools without having to jump back and forth through the tools here at the top. This is so much better for getting work done faster and simpler without having to search for your favorite brush. Rebel 6 now has new image filters. We can see up here, there's Gaussian blur, lens blur, and sharpen. So let's look at these here. You can immediately see it with preview turned on. Lens blur will give you some different options as if you were using a camera. So let's go ahead, uh, we're gonna render this and let's increase the size, render it again. This is great if you want to create that shallow depth of field look in your artwork and sharpen. You can see that really brings out the contrast and the details when it sharpens. There's new filter masks. So let's go ahead and jump over here. We're going to look at hue and saturation. Now you can adjust the entire image by using the sliders up here. And if you check color range, this is going to apply a mask. The mask is going to be the color selected in between these middle two nodes and then fall off. So how much it selects of the colors in between these ranges will be defined by these nodes right here. So let's go ahead and uh, adjust saturation now. And you can see the saturation is being applied or desaturation is being applied to just this range here. So you can see how that fall off works. So it pulls in some more colors there. This gives you so much control. And now we're going to look at layer masks. Now we're going to duplicate the layer we have right here. We're going to go over here to lens blur. We're going to render and apply. So now we have this shallow depth of field looking blur. We're gonna move this layer down here to the bottom and we are going to right click on layer two, add layer mask. Now, if we go in here and we use black, what we can do is we can remove and with white, we can add. So let's remove a little bit more here and what you're going to see is this is going to give us an option of doing really clean, nice masks and create some wonderful effects that are non-destructive. 
you can see in here. And now we have this element. So let's bring our brush size down, switch to white. And we can bring these elements back. All right, so let's look at this and you can see we've got this beautiful effect using the layer masks in Rebel 6. The brush creator's gotten a lot of love, so let's go ahead and open that up. There are new blending modes. So here you can see paint. You have the option of choosing from this list of blending modes. And here we have linear dodge selected. So as we paint in here, you can see that this really adds some beautiful lights. You can switch these to create shadows different modes to erase, play with the luminance, the saturation, and these work beautifully. Now let's look at a couple of the other ones that are built into Rebel 6. There's some beautiful new additions like the grunge brushes inside of the uh, oils and acrylics. These are super cool. These are done using a new property called Stretched inside of the brush creator a texture properties so you can on the fly adjust the scale brightness and contrast there is a lot of power here and inside of sliders there's an option for length now so you can adjust the length and the brush will run out of paint watercolor has new granulation brushes Now, I am super excited about Rebel 6, and I think you guys should be excited too. This has taken all the great features that are in Rebel 5 and refined them, made everything easier to use, easier to organize, and faster to create wonderful, beautiful art with. I haven't shared with you all the features in Rebel 6, so make sure you check out more information in the blog. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to this channel and check out Rebel 6 right now.